While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten, could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, Many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. There are a surprising number of historical anomalies which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages, a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not, with the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community, a controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present, 
all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974 when a Glenn Daniel professor of archaeology at Cambridge University took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affairs artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important, and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel Affair highly compelling. We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet, proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Ellora Cave system, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet, I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks, we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India, indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable, now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, the rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century, the earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy." End quote. However, what we do know for a fact, and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some indeed more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability 
but Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed, with unbelievable artistic and complex vision, created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling. During our research, we have discovered a number of methods to prove that there have indeed been lost civilizations here upon our planet along with their once high technologies. One of the most peculiar being polygonal masonry, which although claimed by some as geopolymer blocks, are made of all sorts of naturally found and subsequently quarried strata. However, what is interesting about this magnificent technique is the visual evidence of more primitive attempts made later, and also its selective use as casing stones, covering sections of far more ancient structures seemingly used in an attempt to conserve said sites from further erosion. One side of particular interest is that of Emilia, found within modern-day Italy, which, after part of the ancient wall collapsed, has been scanned in depth. Non-invasive techniques, such as ground-penetrating radar, electrical resistive tomography, specifically adapted for this study, laser scanning and digital terrestrial photogrammetry, integrated with other geomatic measures, were utilized and provided by total station and global navigation satellite systems. The results came as a surprise to those investigating the inner stability of the wall, finding three separate periods of activity. In other words, at least three now lost civilizations had been building the wall prior to the arrival of what is now commonly referred to as the Cyclopean period. According to the official study, quote, we defined a max wall thickness of about 3.5 meters for the cyclopic sector. We show details of the internal block organization, and we detected low resistivity values, interpretable with high water content behind the basal part of the walls. Could this be residual evidence of a great flood? They continued, then quantitative analysis to assess reliable geotechnical stability was done. The results give rise, for the first time, to internal imaging of these ancient walls, highlighting features associable to different building styles related to different historical periods." End quote. Who were these ancient civilizations? Where did they go? Polygonal techniques are now a lost technology, a smoking gun argument in opposition of modern paradigm one of a supposed unbroken timeline of continual evolution into our own modern civilization. The study, we feel, has not only proven our own hypothesis regarding multiple lost civilizations, but could also give credence to the theory of the Great Flood. It is a wall, and indeed research discovery, which we find highly compelling.